I know HR used to be seen as um, personnel and it was very impersonal and it was sort of the rule master. Um, as an HR director, really what I'm responsible for is all aspects of the employee's relationship with the company. Everything from hiring to payroll, benefits, processing, workers' compensation if they're injured, um, career planning, succession planning, compensation analysis, coaching and counseling employees, um, unfortunately sometimes terminations, discipline, um, and I, I love getting to build relationships with employees and nobody works because they want to. They all work so that they can go home and have the time and money to you know, do the things that they really value and want to invest in. And so my job uh, is to make sure that everything is taken care of on a personal side so that they're free to, to do their work without worrying about is their copay going to go through or is their paycheck going to always um, deposit correctly and uh, trying to help resolve disputes, um, interpersonal relationships and ensure that they're free to focus on their work. Chaparral is a mid-sized oil and gas company based in Oklahoma City. Our operations are primarily in Oklahoma, Louisiana, Texas. Um, we have a really new exciting venture where we're doing enhanced oil recovery with CO2. That's sort of our new and, and exciting branch. We have about 800 employees, uh, most of them here in Oklahoma and a few in the Texas Panhandle. Uh, and they have been around for over 25 years and they are up and comers. They're sort of the quiet company. Uh, I think they're the Northwestern Mutual of, of oil and gas. Um, but they are a very familial culture. Uh, everyone knows everyone, everyone's supportive of one another, and it's just a great corporation to work for. Okay. Um, outside of work, I love to do the things, uh, just like everyone else, that make work palatable. <laughs> um, lawyer by day, and actress, and philanthropist by night. Um, I coach soccer. I played soccer all my life. My father's British, so we didn't have a choice. We were going to play proper football. <laughs> um, and I love to sing and dance and perform. I have a music background. Went to Pepperdine on a music scholarship, which is why I had to go to law school. <laughs> um, so I still do a lot of community theater. I perform primarily at the Pollard Theater in Guthrie. Uh, currently doing Legally Blonde, the musical. Um, playing Paulette and I, I love to do that and that's just so invigorating um, and revitalizing to get to be around such passionate people and people who are willing to to live maybe a more humble lifestyle so that they can do what they love. Um, I also am very involved at Day Spring Church Christ in Edmond. I teach Sunday school and then I have two organizations that I'm really passionate about. One of them is Mission Predizon. And it's a medical mission in Catacamas, Honduras that provides over 72,000 contacts a year uh, in 21 mountain communities through eight mountain clinics and it's entirely sponsored by donations and so I like to travel to Honduras and, and spend time in the mountain communities there working with the kids. They have early education, a lot of health care awareness. Um, sometimes it's just digging latrines, but it's always a great experience, beautiful people and a beautiful culture. And then I'm also on the board of You Are Special Ministries, and it is a self-esteem based program in Edmond that provides clothes to all the children under the poverty level three times a year. And it has labels sewn in that say, made especially for you because you are special. Um, and it's the process of bringing them through the line to get their clothes is very engaged. Uh, we always insist that the children pick out what they want, not what the parents want. And they get a new outfit and a new backpack and new pairs of shoes and socks and everything that'll hopefully make them feel proud of themselves and help develop their confidence and self-esteem uh, in such a shaky and influential time when they're, when they're in elementary school. My advice to, well, the younger generation and, and anyone, um, I have a grandmother who's 104 and still lives alone uh, in Edmond, and I think a lot of these things are um, exemplary of her behavior. You always have time for the things you put first. So figure out what you value, what you hope to accomplish, what you believe in, and put those things first. All of those activities come first because you'll always have time for them. Um, more advice would be, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing with gusto and with aplomb. So go ferociously after the things that, that you're going to do. Um, 
I also think you have to admit mistakes early and often, and then try not to make them again. I believe that you really have to run your life deliberately or it will run you. Um, make choices, commit to them, and follow through on them. Otherwise, short of a boat without a rudder, and, and life will run you if you don't run it. Uh, and then finally, and maybe this just comes from my theater background, but my best advice would be fake it till you make it. Smile until you become friendly, give until you become altruistic um, and, and generous, serve until you become a true servant. And if you do something long enough, then it becomes part of who you are. So pick those things that you want to be and start faking them and soon you'll realize they are in fact who you are.